Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Mushroom Wonderland. And today I'm just taking Gunner for a walk in the neighborhood and there are mushrooms growing everywhere. I thought it would be interesting to just walk around, look at the mushrooms that are growing in the yards and the sides of the sidewalks and uh, just get a feel for what mushrooms are fruiting out here in the neighborhood this time of year. Make sure to hit subscribe. Let's go see what kind of mushrooms are growing in the neighborhood. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. We have a lot of LBMs. Man, they grow all the way along this wall. And check these guys out. Let me get a big one. Pull it up and flip it over for you. Wow, that's a textbook Gallerina marginata or a, or the funeral bell, or the skull cap. Deadly, deadly mushrooms right here. Really high in amatoxin. Same thing that's in death caps. So these guys have these kind of orange brown colored gills, a brown colored spore print, kind of a rusty brown, and it leaves this ring on the stipe and you can see all the orange colored spores have landed on here the rusty brown spores landed on the annulus and left this really distinct ring gallerina always have this like kind of chevron pattern on the stipe too you can kind of see it right there but these guys are deadly um i don't know it might take 15 or 20 of them to kill someone but the real danger with these mushrooms is that they can look and grow right next to um, magic mushrooms and if you accidentally pick these it could be serious serious trouble so Gallerina, probably the biggest threat to mushroom, to magic mushroom hunters in the urban areas because it's so unassuming. It's caramel colored, much like a magic mushroom is, but these guys, yeah, orange colored gills and spore deposit, annulus on the stipe. And psilocybin mushrooms have a dark purple brown spore, so the gills are dark. But so, man, they go all the way up here. Tons of Gallerina. Be careful out there. All right, let's keep going. You ready to go, buddy? Right here in the park, we have some uh, Copernellus micaceus, or some really big mica caps growing here out of the ground. And there's a, a young tree right here. Looks like oak leaves are kind of laying around, but you know, maybe growing on these oak roots. These are a gorgeous specimen of Copernellus micaceus, or the mica cap. Uh, kind of a complex of mushrooms, edible, um, kind of small, and they turn into basically black ink when they get old. But they grow in these big clusters, and they'll often have kind of like a, a granulated sort of like dust on the caps, dark spore print, and uh, they're very unique looking, very kind of distinct and um, Cool mushrooms in a park like this. I wouldn't collect them for food just because they do fertilize and spray stuff here, but really impressive flushes of them. Look at this. And this is when they get a little bit older. So, oh. Copernellus micaceus or the mica cap growing all over in the park, but be aware of, um, you know, sprays and toxins and things like that, fertilizers. Personally, I, I don't think I would eat those. So, I'm gonna leave those behind. Look right here in the neighborhood, we have a couple of Agaricus Augustus, or the Prince Mushrooms. These guys always have that kind of scaled look, and they even stain a little bit yellow when they're damaged. And they have a really sweet almond scent. So these are some of my favorite edibles. See that chocolate brown spore print? Just like a portobello, because it's really closely related. Same genus, Agaricus. So this one, Agaricus Augustus, or the Prince. What a beautiful couple of mushrooms. Um, I'm gonna leave them here though today. I don't really have anything to carry them in. They're kind of fragile, but look for these in your neighborhood. Some of the best eating mushrooms for sure, for sure. Agaricus Augustus, really good in like a cream soup with chicken, an urban mushroom, but be aware of lawns that are fertilized heavily. You know, mushrooms do pick up heavy metals. So, you know, this area there's dandelions and and scraggly areas and bald areas of the lawn. I, I really don't think that they do any treatment here. So these would be good to take, but I'm gonna leave these behind. Agaricus Augustus, awesome 
uh, neighborhood mushrooms for sure. Right here I see this cute little fruit tree orchard and as I see right here there's some mushrooms growing. As I get closer I notice they got this little whiskery scaly cap. Pull one of these out, flip it over. Been eaten pretty good by the insects. But this is our malaria or honey mushrooms. So what this means is it's infecting the roots and this tree. And these trees are on their way out. This one looking pretty sickly. And uh, it's probably spread to all of these trees. So unfortunately, you know, they've all been parasitized by our malaria. And these are the fruiting bodies, but the fungus is already well established in the ground and uh, to the detriment of these trees, eventually they will die from the armillaria. There's a young, a young fruiting body coming up. Um, the bugs are eating the fruiting bodies, but I'm sure this fungus is alive and well here in the ground. So if you see these honey mushrooms coming up, it could be a sign that your trees are being attacked and they're probably not doing very well. And right here, another, you know, a, thought to be a mycorrhizal mushroom might be growing with one of these fruit trees that's kind of crazy to see a little zero camellus atropurpureus growing this far away from an evergreen tree but perhaps there's some large douglas fir over there so its branches can, or its roots can reach over here but our malaria kind of a bad sign unfortunately for them yep all right here at the base a big patch of our malaria so Fortunately for them, these trees are on their way out, and they'll probably wonder why. Why are the trees looking sick? Well, it's because they're being they're being eaten, and the armillaria is killing the cells of the trees, and then eating those cells like a saprobe. So, kind of an interesting life cycle, and it's too bad. A cute little orchard here. Its years are probably numbered. Sometimes if I'm talking quickly while I'm showing these mushrooms, it's because people get suspicious when you're bent over in their yard and looking at things, especially mushrooms. People get suspicious about mushrooms. I don't know what that's all about. A little crow chilling in this yard and I look down on the stump and I see a couple things growing. For one, there's a really kind of cool, uh, looks like a schizophyllum. Uh, yep, little little tiny ones right here. Split gills. These are really cool little mushrooms. Have like tons of compatible mating genders, which is really interesting. About 35,000 different compatible mating genders for the Schizophyllum community. These ones that like dead wood. Oh, some nice furry ones there. Very fluorescent gills. And then right here, growing off of this stump as well, we have these velvet shank or enoki mushrooms. So... This is Flamulina filiformis, or the enoki, our local enoki, which is actually the true enoki, and they have these tough stipes. They like cold weather, kind of yellowish gills with a brown spore print, and uh, they can be quite visited when they're wet. These are a little beat up, you know, the bugs have been eating on them, but otherwise these are a good edible, and you could culture that or get a spore print and start those and have some decent, um, some decent mushrooms to eat. And they often grow in big clusters. This is a small little group, but you're a Flamulina filiformis, or the Enoki mushroom growing right in the neighborhood next to Schizophyllum community. What, you ready to go walk some more, buddy? There's so many mushrooms to see. All right, let's keep going down the block. Oh, all kinds of mycena. These little white, white spored mushrooms just growing all over in the lawns. This one, the species, maybe capillara peas. And then right here, some lacaria. So this one, a mycorrhizal mushroom. The lacaria lacata group. Um, a big group of edible mushrooms growing in association with the tree. Whenever I see these beautiful silver firs, these kind of like these kind of trees I always look under them because there's cool mushrooms under them what do we got here look at this lactarius growing with a, one of the neighborhood trees that's gonna lactate this milky color look at that the gray stemmed lactarius growing with this beautiful subalpine silver fir a couple of these here really nice mycorrhizal 
associates. There's quite a few growing right here. Not known for edibility, but more lacaria. Right here we have a Entoloma edulis or a Nolania edulis. Um, and they're pretty common around here too in the in later in the in the season and into the winter months you'll find these but these are saprobic so they're not necessarily growing with the trees but a lot of mushrooms in that yard lucky them good old neighborhood birch tree growing underneath it just about every year you can find these this is known as the birch bolete or the Flexinum scabrum. It's got a spongy pore surface underneath, kind of yellowish colored. And the stipe has these black kind of fibrils on it, like little whiskers. It's another big one there. Sometimes these get really huge, but they're always growing in association with birch, and they're very, they're very um, loyal to their tree associates. So you don't find these growing anywhere else. Now there's uh, the Lexinum insigni, which is aspen related but these ones birch we don't have native birch really here in this part of washington like there's another one they're a decent edible at the mushroom club that i'm a big part of served um, birch bolete soup for years and years to people um, all the guests coming through some people say they cause gi upset but i think any mushroom can if you undercook it or if you just have a sensitivity but these ones are a decent edible the lexinum scabrum or the birch bolete, you might find these growing right in your neighborhood. Right here we have the neighborhood wood chip pile, which is usually a, an area where I will check around these wood chips. But right here I see these large white mushrooms growing on the sides of the wood chip pile. So. Um, let's flip one of these over, see what we got. Oh, big ring on it. White gills. This could look like a deadly ammonita, but in this area, this is pretty common in the spring. And this one is known as the Leuco agaricus leucothides. These are a little bit beat up, but movable white ring, white gills. Um, it does not have a vulva at the base like an ammonita might. And we don't really have these destroying angel type white amanitas that are deadly that grow right here in this area. So this one is usually what you'll find. Leuco agaricus. It looks like an agaricus, but it's got white gills or leuco gills. So that makes sense there. And uh, reportedly edible, but most people just don't eat the leuco agaricus. There's an older one. I actually see one of our local hallucinogenic mushrooms that grow on wood chips. Growing right here. This one, Gymnopilus luteifolius. So they start out this kind of furry red maroon color. And as they develop and mature, they'll turn actually a gold color. But this one is still retaining its purple color and really brilliant gills that are just kind of like orange yellow. I don't really want to pick this because I'd like to see it develop a little bit more. But a nice little fruiting of Gymnopilus luteifolia. So this is an active mushroom, contains psilocybin. It can stain a little bit blue sometimes. Don't see much bluing going on here. But um, yeah, these are a common sapro growing on wood chips here. And uh, I was happy to see these. I just, I didn't expect really to see them on my neighborhood wood chip pile, but here they are. Gymnopilus luteifolius, or the, uh, the laughing gyms, you know, our version of a laughing gym, so. Kind of cool, you could culture these, but they're really mild and they're very bitter and so most people don't don't use them. But I think they're some of the more beautiful psychedelic mushrooms out there. So, always happy to see Gymnopilus luteifolius, the laughing gym. Wow, look at these handsome mushrooms growing here on this wood chip pile. These ones, Leuco agaricus americanus. Look at that. Wow, those are beautiful. They look very like pluteus like. Big ring on them. Very handsome mushrooms. And they go through a lot of different morphological stages. Here's kind of a young one. Looks a bit different. You see that? It's more smooth, almost could look a bit like an agaricus. 
and it's got that sealed partial veil that's protecting the gills until they get mature enough to create spores. But what a handsome set of mushrooms, Luco agaricus uh, or Luco caprinus. There's a little bit of a distinction between those two. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, these are said to be edible, but I've never eaten them. Um, yeah, nice mushrooms. All right, y'all, as we've seen, there are tons of mushrooms out here. There are hallucinogenic mushrooms, there's deadly mushrooms, there's edible mushrooms, there's all kinds of mushrooms. You have to know each mushroom before you can know if it's edible or not. You just have to learn them all individually. So start with the ones in your yard, the ones right outside your front door, and work your way all the way out into the woods. And I hope to see you there on the next episode. Much love.